step right up for a peek into the 1970 movie MASH, directed by Robert Altman, it throws us into the mess of the Korean War. The story tracks a bunch of cheeky surgeons at the 4077th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. It's famous for its dark jokes, anti-authority vibes, and big cast. Alan Alda and Donald Sutherland lead a talented team, bringing war's craziness and humanity to life. With clever talk and touching scenes, MASH sticks with you long after it's over. Is there a scene that really got to you? What do you think makes this movie special? Share your tales and thoughts below. One person's opinion of MASH is that it hasn't aged well. They hope they've aged better than the movie. Another review says it's a really funny and rebellious military satire set during the Korean War. It's about a group of surgeons at the 4077th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, like Captains Hawkeye Pierce, Duke Forrest, and Trapper John McIntyre. They don't like military rules and often clash with strict types like Major Frank Burns and Major Margaret O'Houlihan. The movie, directed by Robert Altman, has funny conversations and scenes, but it also shows the harsh reality of surgery. Even though it's funny, it doesn't ignore the serious stuff. Altman's relaxed directing style adds to the chaotic feel of the film. The review also mentions the TV series inspired by the movie, which ran for 11 years. Another review calls MASH a groundbreaking film that introduced new techniques like overlapping sound and spontaneous camera work. It says the movie is still good even after many viewings and helped start the careers of several famous actors. In short, MASH is famous for its funny and rebellious look at military life and for its influence on filmmaking. The movie MASH, directed by Robert Altman, changed a lot from the book it's based on. Altman didn't like the book much, saying it was pretty bad and had some racist parts, especially with a character named Spearchucker. He made big changes to the script, like cutting out a story about Ho John coming back injured. In the movie, the story focuses on Surgeon's Trapper and Hawkeye. There's a part where Radar steals blood for Ho John's surgery, which wasn't in the book. Altman had a hard time making the movie because of problems with the studio. He even said, this film wasn't released, it escaped. But despite the challenges, the movie became famous. It's one of four of Altman's films chosen for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. So, MASH is different from the book, but Altman's changes made it important in cinema history. In production, a Korean setting caption was added to the beginning of the film as requested by 20th Century Fox. References to the Korean War were made in announcements on the camp's public address system and in a radio announcement clarifying that the events depicted occurred in 1951. This was intentionally done to distinguish the setting from the ongoing Vietnam War. The actor who played Father Mulcahy in the 1969 film version declined the role in the subsequent television series. He has also appeared in three films selected for the National Film Registry MASH, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, and The Little Mermaid. In the same year as Catch-22, MASH hit the screens, both mocking mid-20th century American wars. Based on a best-selling novel, it boasted a large cast and had director Mike Nichols fresh from The Graduate. Despite Catch-22's anticipated success, MASH prevailed, leading Robert Altman to humorously hang a caught 22 banner. In the film, the first Trapper John was played by Elliot Goode. Wayne Rogers took on the role in the TV series MASH, followed by Pernell Roberts in Trapper John M.D. Sylvester Stallone, an extra in the film, confessed this to good. Altman found it amusing to have directed Stallone unknowingly. In the movie MASH, there's a radio announcer with a distinctive voice. Even though a significant part of her role was cut, she still left a strong impression. This led to her getting roles on TV shows where her talent was even more evident. The song Suicide is Painless from the movie became really popular, with its haunting melody capturing the hearts of audiences worldwide. In 2004, the American Film Institute listed it as one of the best movie songs, securing its place in cinematic history. This newfound fame boosted the movie's status, turning it into a favorite among generations of fans. Its clever humor, touching moments, and memorable characters continue to connect with viewers, making it a timeless classic. In the movie MASH, the characters draw inspiration from real-life figures as seen in the memorial plaque at Harvard University's Memorial Hall. Names like Captain Benjamin Franklin Pierce hail from Maine and are listed alongside those who served in the U.S. Civil War. Donald Sutherland, despite initial consideration for another role, successfully lobbied for the part of Hawkeye. 
Interestingly, James Garner, who was a Korean War veteran himself, vied for the same role. Director Robert Altman found relative freedom during filming as attention was focused on other major projects at 20th Century Fox, including the successful war films Patton and Torah. Torah, Torah. Despite their different war settings, all three films achieved both critical acclaim and box office success. MASH introduced audiences to Walter Radar O'Reilly, portrayed by Gary Berghoff in various productions. This included the 1970 movie, the 1972 television series, a guest appearance on Aftermath in 1983, and the television pilot Walter in 1984. In a subtle nod, the movie references director Robert Altman when the public address system calls out the name Robert A. among others. During a scene where Major Frank Burns is escorted away in a straitjacket, the song playing over the loudspeakers is the Japanese farewell song. MASH is a movie released in 1970. Gary Berghoff, who played the young Radar, was actually 27 years old, despite the character being around 18 or 19. In the book, Hawkeye is portrayed as a faithful family man married with children. However, in the 1970 film adaptation, Hawkeye is depicted as still married with kids, but not faithful to his wife. Subsequently, in the 1972 continuation, Hawkeye becomes a promiscuous and confirmed bachelor, a stark departure from the book's portrayal. 20th Century Fox was one of the pioneering studios to license their back catalog for home video in the late 1970s. MASH was among the first titles to be made available for rental on VHS and Betamax. Elliot Good and Donald Sutherland developed a humorous habit on set, playfully calling each other Shirley. Good's spontaneous use of the nickname during filming amused Sutherland, prompting director Robert Altman to include it in the final cut. This nickname was a nod to Sutherland's then-wife, Shirley Douglas. During editing, the filmmakers realized the need for additional transitions and added loudspeaker shots and announcements to the film. Some of these shots, featuring the moon in the background, coincided with the Apollo 11 astronauts' mission to the moon. In 2006, Premiere magazine recognized this movie as one of the 50 greatest comedies of all time. Over the years, it has frequently appeared on various lists of the best and greatest films. When portraying General Hammond in both the 1970 movie and the initial three episodes of the subsequent series, maintained consistency in his character portrayal. The film, MASH, earned a claim upon release, securing an Oscar for its screenplay by Ring Lardner Jr., however, not all critics were in agreement. The New York Times, through Roger Greenspun, acknowledged the film's impudence and humor but critiqued its perceived lack of order, a crucial element in successful comedy. Donald Sutherland's parents had a personal connection to the movie. During a particular scene, when Hawkeye greets the camerawoman with a hi, Dad, Sutherland's father responded by standing up and cheerfully saying, Hi, Donnie. In summary, the 1970 movie MASH received praise for its boldness and humor, earning an Oscar for its screenplay. G. Wood's portrayal of General Hammond bridged the film and the early episodes of the subsequent series. Despite critical acclaim, the New York Times found fault with the film's perceived disorder. Donald Sutherland's father added a personal touch by responding to a scene in a way only a parent could. 